Today we're going to look at a really nice math contest problem that hints towards a strategy for producing maybe a new or lesser known family of irrational numbers. So let's see what we have here. We want to define this number which I'm calling x via its digits. So it's 0 0., d1, d2, d3, so on and so forth by the rule that d sub n, the nth digit past the decimal point, is the first digit of 2 to the n plus 3 to the n. And then our goal for this problem is to show that x is not periodic. But now let's observe that it does not rule out the possibility that x could be eventually periodic. Now, if we could show that, then, well, x would be an irrational number, and we would have that family of irrational numbers. That's why I say that this problem points towards a construction of a lesser known family of irrational numbers and doesn't actually construct that lesser known family. Okay, so let's get to the solution of this, and then, well, you can play with the bigger problem as a homework exercise if you'd like to. Okay. So let's introduce some notation. So let's set a sub n equal to 2 to the n plus 3 to the n for natural numbers n. And then of course dn will be the first digit of a sub n under this maybe notation. Now let's make a little bit of a chart of n, a sub n, and d sub n just to get an idea of what's going on here. So let's maybe put n here, we'll put a sub n on the second row, and d sub n on the third row. Okay, so let's get that built. Okay, so there we've got a portion of our chart. So finishing at n equals 7. And well, these calculations are fairly elementary, I'll let you check those if you need to. So let's observe that under this setup, our number x is 0.13. 9272 dot dot dot. Okay, good. And now, well, now let's get into the solution. So let's, by way of contradiction, suppose that d sub n is periodic. And well, of course, we're going to want to seek a contradiction. That's what it means to work towards a contradiction. And then, well, let's say that the period is equal to a number which I'll call p. But now, let's observe that this means that 5 is the same thing as d sub 1, which is the same thing as d, d sub 2p plus 1, which is the same thing as d sub 3p plus 1, and so on and so forth. And then, similarly, 1 is the same thing as d sub 2, which is the same thing as d sub p sub 2, and so on and so forth. 3 is the same thing as d3, which is the same thing as dp plus 3, and so on and so forth. And now we're going to introduce a new number. So let's go ahead and set n equal to p plus 1. But well, what does that mean that n is in terms of its size? Well, just looking at our chart up here, we can see that, well, p is definitely bigger than or equal to 3. We can actually get a further range for the value of p, just like noticing that we don't get any repeats, but we'll use that one. Notice here we have p is bigger than or equal to 3, which means that n is bigger than or equal to 4. But now I'm going to follow that up with a claim, and that's if n is bigger than or equal to 4, then 3 to the n is strictly bigger than 2 to the n plus 2 which we can easily prove with induction. So observe that our base case will be the case when n is equal to 4, and we'll have 3 to the 4 is bigger than 2 to the 6. 2 to the 6 is, of course, 64, and 3 to the 4 is 81. 81 is bigger than 64. And then an induction step is pretty easy as well. So let's suppose for some k bigger than or equal to 4, we know 3 to the k is bigger than 2 to the k plus 1, and then we'll make the following observation. We have 3 to the k plus 1, well that's going to be bigger than 2 times 3 to the k. I just factored a 
three out of that and exchanged it for a two. Obviously that makes it get smaller, but that's in uh, particular gonna be bigger than two to the K plus three because I can use my induction hypothesis to exchange that three to the K for a two to the K plus two. And that's the quick proof of that by induction. And then I'm gonna make another little observation before we move on to the next board. And let's observe that under this setup, we know that D sub N is equal to, well, it's gonna be equal to five. That's because, well, it's one period past D sub one. And then D sub N plus two is also known. That's gonna be equal to three because it's two past, well, D sub one. Okay, so now let's keep all of that in mind as we move on. Okay, so here's what we had on the last board. Towards a contradiction, we suppose that we did have a periodic sequence and we said that P was that period. And then, well, we looked at this number N, which was P plus one, and well, we saw that DN, because of this period, was equal to five, and DN plus two was equal to three. There was a small typo on the last board where I said DN plus two was equal to one, but it's clearly equal to three. Okay, so now let's notice that since DN is equal to five, that tells us something about A sub N. In fact, it says that there exists some K bigger than or equal to one, a natural number K, if you will, such that A sub N is between five times 10 to the K and six times 10 to the K. Well, that's what it means because D sub N is an extraction of the first digit of A sub N. And then let's also pair that with a little bit of a calculation. So let's look at this. A N plus two, well, that's gonna be equal to two to the N plus two plus three to the N plus two. Now let's observe that that's gonna be two to the N plus two plus nine times three to the N. Well, I just factored a three squared out of this term right here. And now, well, what I'm gonna do from there is I'm gonna write this as two to the N plus two plus three to the N plus eight times three to the N. So, well, why am I doing that? Well, now I can use my inequality that I proved on the last board to exchange this three to the N with a two to the N plus two. And that means that we're gonna get an inequality in this direction. And we'll have another two to the N plus two, which we can combine with this to leave us with two times two to the N plus two, and then plus eight times three to the N. But now let's observe that this two times two to the N plus two can be rewritten as eight times two to the N. We can factor that eight out and we'll have eight times two to the N plus three to the N, but that is eight times A sub N. But now let's observe that we can move some stuff around here, or actually we don't really need to move some stuff around here. What we have here is eight times A sub N is less than A sub N plus two. But now I'm gonna work off the right-hand side of this inequality and you know build it into a compound inequality. So let's rewrite this again via its definition, two to the N plus two plus three to the N plus two. But I can rewrite that pretty easily as four times two to the N plus nine times three to the N. And I can do a very, very simplistic replacement of four with nine to push our inequality in the correct direction. So that's gonna be less than nine times two to the N plus nine times three to the N. But I can clearly factor that nine out and I'll have nine times two to the N plus three to the N, which is A sub N. So let's keep this in mind. We have A N plus two is between eight A N and nine A N. Okay, so let's bring that up. Okay, so on the last board, we had this inequality for A sub N. It put it between 
two multiples of powers of 10, and this inequality for a n and a n plus two. And now we're gonna smash them together. So let's see, what we'll do is, like I said, put these two together. So let's take this left-hand inequality and extend the left-hand inequality of our compound inequality, our lower compound inequality, and observe that doing that, we'll have eight times five is 40 times 10 to the K is less than a n plus two, okay. And then, well, we're also going to use the right-hand side of this inequality to extend this to the right. And we'll have nine times six, so that is 54 times 10 to the K. So let's see what we have. We have a n plus two is between four with a, with a bunch of zeros and five, four with a bunch of zeros. Now, keeping that in mind, and also the way that dn is defined in terms of a n, that gives us two possibilities for d sub n. So notice that this a sub n plus two can only start with a four or a five, meaning that dn plus two is either equal to four or five. But now let's see that that is problematic because up down here, we showed that dn plus two is four or five, but up here by the periodicity, we know that dn plus two must be equal to three. But then putting those two things together, we get an obvious contradiction. Well, contradicting that assumption that our d sub n sequence, which was forming this number x, was periodic, which means that it must not be periodic. Now, like I said before, this doesn't quite rule out a strange possibility that this is still a rational number, but I think you can probably mold this proof into one that will show that x is not rational, bringing about that family of irrational numbers. So maybe post in the comments if you have any luck with that, and that's a good place to stop.